chakra corresponds to the earth and it's usually um, well not usually always <laughs> it's always red it's the it's uh, emblematic of the color red and it is in at the base of our spine it corresponds to our feelings of security um, and uh, fear when it's imbalanced it's our survival instinct when we can face our fears and we uh, feel safe not worried about the future or um, feeling like we don't have enough money or we don't have enough stuff if we're hoarding a lot of things so these are either um, too much of the chakra or too little to be balanced we want to be we want to be safe yet we want to take um, we want to be proactive in creating our own safety uh, we we don't live in fear but we we operate out of love as always um, so it's at our base of our spine and some of the questions you can ask yourself to see if you are balanced in this chakra is you know do I feel comfortable in my body do I hoard physical items am I financially secure do you fear change uh, are you organized are you leading a life of vitality uh, do you trust do you trust easily and we like to use our essential oils with affirmations uh, and I'll just go through some of them uh, as just before we go through the essential oils so some of them could be every day I receive all that I need and if you have been practicing affirmations you will understand that um, as we speak aloud our intentions in the present form as if it's already happened and being grateful for it, um, your subconscious starts to take it in and it starts to really believe it and you start to embody it. So the practice and the ritual and the discipline of just telling yourself what you really um, have as your soul's deepest desire is actually really then creating it for yourself. Okay, so the next affirmation could be, abundance flows freely to me. Uh, I trust that I'm safe and release all fear that is holding me back. I am connected to Mother Earth. You know, Mother Earth as being your support and your, um, your container for your uh, full expression. Uh, I claim good health, that is my birthright. So you can really tap into what it is that's relevant for you at this point in your life and just be very disciplined about saying it every single day as you use the essential oils. So the essential oils for the root chakra, um, I have picked out four per chakra, but just bear in mind, there are so many that Young Living offers um, that you really could play with it. A lot of it is intuition based and you can um, use many of the oils as long as your intention is for that purpose. Think of grounding oils as trees with deep roots. So these are trees that grow really nice and tall but they have deep roots to keep them safe and secure and stable so some of these could be cedar wood um, northern lights black spruce and then for the blends I chose abundance and grounding today so those are just some of the examples and this is how um, let's say we use cedar wood today uh, let, this is how we would use it. So some of the others could be vetiver uh, or even balsam fir. The asanas, which is the yoga, uh, yoga poses, are very much the ones that keep us grounded to the earth. And I am just going to give you a few of the tips that um, every person that practices yoga really should keep in mind. So the mountain pose is Tadasana and it is the real um, foundation of all our poses. We want a, a strong aligned posture because what we 
what we um, project to the world is really our own worldview and our own um, sort of limiting beliefs that trap us into this posture that we embody. So we want to have a nice, tall posture, confident, safe, secure. So we start with our feet. And I'm not sure if you can see our feet. I think you can. Um, so the feet can be slightly apart or together. You want the toes together. You want your toes pointing straight forward. And you also want the outsides of your feet parallel to your yoga mat. I don't have a yoga mat here today, but um, honestly, you can practice anywhere. That's the beauty of yoga. You don't need your yoga mat to practice. You don't need any special um, space to practice. So imagine uh, you have this energetic force in your feet coming up all the way through your crown, and it starts with your big toe. So your big toe um, has is pointing, I mean, um, is really rooting into the ground and you're feeling this almost um, circular energy going out to your outer ankles and then your shins are pulling into the center. Your kneecaps are lifting. You're lifting your torso away from your hips. And as you do that, you may feel this slight um, protrusion of your ribs. You kind of want to relax that by lifting your back and then your shoulders are always um, relaxed. So you can imagine how a stressed out person would always have the shoulders up. You wanna relax it down the back. So from the side, right, you may, you may then start to notice your pelvis. Some people may have it out or in. You kinda wanna find a nice balance. And your shoulders are nice and relaxed. And then your chin, so your chin doesn't jut out or it doesn't go too far into your chest bone. It's just nice and parallel to the earth. And then you feel this really lengthening from your crown up and your hands are by your side. And so that is Tadasana, very important for uh, a strong foundation. When we have a strong foundation, we can start being really flexible and powerful in other areas of our life. So again, we've chosen cedar wood here, and we put a drop in our hands. Put that down. So in, you rub it around three times, and you inhale, so we can very easily say uh, our, our um, affirmation here. So abundance flows freely to me. And I'm going to inhale that three times with my feet really grounded. And yet um, there's this push and a pull. I'm grounding down with my feet, but pulling up with my um, torso and relaxed. And then I can do this aroma breath exercise where you're still in Tadasana. You're inhaling up to... Um, your hands to the sky, right? And when you're here, just notice that your shoulders are not pulled up to your ears. Just have it really nice and relaxed. You exhale your hands to your nostrils. And then you inhale here with the affirmation, abundance flows freely to me. And exhale your hands down. So that's your aroma breath. I usually do that three times as we start the practice. And um, the other poses, just think of the poses as many of the standing poses. Uh, could be mountain pose, that was the start, right? Uh, it could be the um, high lunge poses, right? Where you are going like this, and you're rooting down with your root chakra. And the other thing I like to make sure people uh, have a nice alignment of is that your, your knee never goes beyond your ankle, it's just right above, and your knee is pointing in the same direction as your toes, okay? So we don't ever um, destabilize our knee here. And your hips are just nice and forward. 
and this is a nice grounding pose. You could also do that with um, Warrior One, where you are moving your left hip forward to have a nice square hip. And the work here is to um, really press on the back little toe side to really energetically lift that leg up. Okay? So there are many um, grounding poses as well for the seated positions. You could go into Dandasana where your seat, sit bones are really nice and grounded and yet you're lifting your torso here. So you can always just sit here and you can come forward as well with, with a nice um, forward bend, keeping your spine straight. The, I won't go through all the poses, of course, but the idea is that your feet are nice and grounded and your sit bones are nice and grounded. So find those poses that give you that stability. We're going to move on to the sacral 